So SQL, sometimes also pronounced as SQL, uh, stands for Structured Query Language, and it's a, a language that defines um, queries for fetching information from the database, and it includes um, keywords such as select, um, so what, which fields you want to select, uh, where, which is your criteria, order by, and so on. So in this video, I'm going to show you briefly how it can be used um, in a context like this. So this is a web page. Uh, it's a dummy login page, so feel free uh, to have a go to login yourself. Um, I um, will include a link in the description of the video. So there's obviously some things in here that are obviously insecure. So firstly, um, I, I, I haven't hidden the password, so usually you see asterisks or spots or something. And also at the bottom of the page, I've included a list of valid usernames and passwords. So actually the, the challenge is to log in without using any of these. So to begin with, I'll just log in as a valid user. So I'm going to put in JB and I'm going to put in 123. And the hope is that I'm going to log in as Joe Blogs. So I'll click log in and yeah, welcome Joe Blog. So how does that work? Well, behind the scenes, we're doing some SQL. So this uh, line here shows you what the um, SQL uh, used for that particular login query is. Obviously, displaying that on the page isn't secure. So on, on a real page, if you were trying to hack in, you'd have that extra layer of kind of obscurity, I suppose. And it also shows you which records it's matched. So basically, what this does is it fetches the surname and the forename from the, the user table, which is on the, in the database behind the scenes. It's a MySQL database in this case, um, where the username is JB and the password is 123. So in that table, that will match a particular record. So that query is either going to find one record if the username and password are correct, and it will it'll look at that, it'll look to see if there's a record and, you know, uh, we'll say hello to that person, or it will find no records. So if they're not valid usernames and passwords, um, then no records will be found. So if we go back and I put uh, ABC, for example, um, it will find there'd be no matching records, so you've not logged in. Um, so what's happening here is the information from these fields on the first page are being inserted into the SQL uh, um, query there and uh, used to perform the used to perform the uh, the query to find out whether they're valid so that's the um, it's kind of standard use of SQL but what about if we put something here because we can um, what we type in here gets goes directly into the query uh, what we could do is if we started to put syntax in here uh, for, that we know from SQL and um, if we just try things like that we can see that they are going to appear in here so if we know a bit of SQL what we can try and do is put things in the username and password boxes and in fact this works for all sorts of things so it might work for search boxes as well it doesn't have to be for logging in to try and turn that query into something else and to try and make that query something that will log us in even if we don't know a valid username and password. So at the moment we've got we've got um, his password in this. I'm going to take I'm going to take that valid password out or just swap it for another one. So uh, let's see what we can do. Well, one thing you can do is you can use your knowledge of um, Boolean logic, for example, to try and create a situation where um, something is always true. So there's two things here. You need to create firstly a valid SQL statement. So you need to know a bit of um, SQL syntax, but also you need to create something that is always true. So what's true is that ABC equals ABC. Uh, so that bit will always be true. Now because I know um, that the SQL puts the opening well, I've used apostrophes here for, as a string del delimiter in there for me. I don't need to put the first one in, but putting the second one in will close the string. So if I log in now, um, I can see um, that that bit will always be true, but I haven't quite got the syntax right. So let's have a look. Um, and let's go back. And what about if we say um, something like, just put an extra apostrophe in. There we go. So I've put an extra apostrophe in. I've created a valid SQL statement uh, with a condition that's always true. So what that means, so that is true. So whether the username is true 
or blank. Um, so what that's found, the reason that's logged me in, even though I haven't included any of Joe Bloggs's valid uh, you know, personal details, is um, that it's actually found three records, or all of them, in fact. And there's only three in there, I think. Um, so ordinarily, the code, because it wasn't particularly carefully crafted, only checks to see if there's a record or no records. So if the login details are valid, it will find a record. So it only ever looks at the first one. So it looks to see if there's a first record. And if we've logged in, then there is, otherwise there isn't. So that's why it's, it's chosen Joe Blogs because it's just picking the top one. Even though, so, and so that's that's basically the idea of SQL injection, the fact that you can corrupt um, the intended SQL statement by putting some extra stuff in there. Now, um, I've used some um, sanitization in here, so you can put all sorts of things. So you can create, you can use SQL injection to delete records, delete tables, and stuff. So what I've done is I've used some sanitization to remove the key SQL keywords, drop, alter, and delete from anything that you type in there. Um, but that's that's one of the things you would do to kind of get around this problem. So if we look at how this has been created, so if you've done a course and you're aware of what sanitization is, so it's a bit like validation, but validation, if you put something in there that's not right, the uh, the application or the website will say, well, no, that's not right, have another go. So if it says, you know, enter a positive number and you enter a negative one, it will say, that's negative, try again. Uh, but what sanitization does is it tries to kind of fix it. So if you put a negative number in that situation, it will just kind of remove the minus sign and carry on as if it's a positive number, that kind of thing. So that's an example of sanitization. Um, another example of sanitization might be kind of capitalizing names and that kind of thing. So what we could do is we could disallow certain characters from usernames and passwords. So we could say they're not allowed a space, and uh, but that wouldn't make a lot of difference. You could say you're not allowed um, an apostrophe, uh, speech marks, or um, an equal sign in your username and password and that would obviously make it a lot harder uh, to do this kind of SQL injection attack. Obviously the other sensible thing would be to um, hide the information, not show the SQL. That would uh, give you if, you, if you gave your fields and tables more kind of obscure names, I suppose that might help a little bit, but obscurity isn't the best form of um, uh, you know defense. And also while we're thinking about it, I suppose if the, another form of attack might be to actually try and get hold of that list of usernames and passwords. So these are just stored unencrypted in the database, but in practice you wouldn't have unencrypted um, passwords in the database. You'd use some sort of encryption or hashing technique to disguise those. So that's just in summary, that's a, a look at how SQL uh, is used in web pages to, to log in, for example, and how uh, by entering bits of SQL syntax in fields on forms we can corrupt the sql statement to do something else and in this case you know log in as a person without knowing any of their valid login details